Now, iron destroys vitamin E. Unsaturated fats destroy vitamin E. Estrogen destroys vitamin E. Are you starting to see this kind of similarity between all these three? The problem is vitamin E is very antagonistic to estrogen. It actually works with progesterone to antagonize estrogen. Now, vitamin E, in a simplistic sense, brings oxygen and nutrients to your cells, to your tissues. Estrogen actually pulls, um, sorry, pulls oxygen and nutrients away from the tissues. So iron and unsaturated fats and estrogen destroy vitamin E and oxidize unsaturated fats in red blood cells, which contributes to hemolytic anemia. This is where the red, red blood cells are actually fragile and break down too fast. Now with aging, cells actually break down faster than they can be actually produced. They're produced more slowly, and it actually increases one's tendency to become anemic. Now, as I mentioned, talking about Ray P, two important points when we're talking about anemia, vitamin E, and red blood cells, quoting Ray P, estrogen actually causes dilation of the blood, lowering hemoglobin, and this is typically what MDs look at, or naturopaths look at, they look at hemoglobin as a primary indicator for anemia. So what if it's an estrogen dominance, a progesterone deficiency? You can't detoxify estrogen. You're vitamin A deficient, so you're not producing progesterone, so you're now estrogen dominant in a sense, etc. So we have to look at all these things. And at the same time, many authors, Constance Martin, Ray Pete, they talk about how anemia can actually be caused by a thyroid deficiency, but also high chronic elevated levels of parathyroid hormone which regulates calcium metabolism. So if you're vitamin D deficient, you're not absorbing calcium in the small intestine, you're not taking in the right types of calcium, you're eating foods uh, like nuts that have phytates that block mineral absorption, blood levels of calcium go down, you're gonna have excess levels of parathyroid hormone. And that is inflammatory. So including calcium in your diet through crushed eggshells and dairy and things like this, you can actually downregulate parathyroid hormone. So they've shown that excess chronic levels of parathyroid hormone can actually lead to anemia. Now, women absorb um, iron definitely more than men, especially during pregnancy. They absorb it nine times more because they need it for the developing fetus. Just like your blood volume goes up, or it should, by 40% when you're pregnant, you have something else to actually um, to kind of support. So your iron stores actually go up. And as I mentioned, there's a danger with this because, in men as well, but if you're pregnant and you're estrogen dominant, and you typically see this when people get eclampsia, they get diabetes, they get a lot of swelling and edema, they get morning sickness. A lot of the times it's estrogen plus iron plus unsaturated fats that are doing this, increasing lipofunction in the lipofuscin in the body, leading to increased carbon dioxide, increased cell death, lack of O2 at the cell level, decreased carbon dioxide, oxidative stress, and altered sugar metabolism. And it's been shown through research that lipofuscin actually allows estrogen to be absorbed into the uterus, but actually prevents progesterone's absorption into the uterus, which can lead to morning sickness and toxemia. toxemia. If you want to learn more about toxemia, study the work of Dr. Tom Brewer. Now, as I mentioned before, in many of my videos, iron and estrogen actually increase xanthine oxidase in the body. Xanthine oxidase stimulates the production of uric acid. Now, eating tropical fruits and getting fructose can actually increase uric acid. It's actually a huge antioxidant in our body. The problem is when we convert it because of inflammation, inflammation stimulates xanthine oxidase, iron, estrogen stimulate xanthine oxidase, this actually promotes overproduction of uric acid, which can be highly inflammatory and lead to gout. So iron supplementation, using iron pots, using highly refined foods, eating too many foods that are high in iron, or just taking supplementation, whatever it can be, can actually lead to increased oxidative stress and gout because of increased uric acid levels. Han, Han Celier, he's got many books out there. A great book, uh, it's over there, I'm sorry. He's got many books, so just look them up. He was the guy that kind of coined the term uh, general adaptation syndrome. Han Celier showed in his lab that he could produce scleroderma, which is hardening of the skin through calcification, which is commonly seen with high parathyroid hormone levels and inflammation and high TSH, etc., by giving, um, I think it was rats or monkeys, I'm not sure, so don't quote me on this, but he showed that giving rats or monkeys high doses of iron, he could actually produce scleroderma, which is hardening of the skin through calcification. So you can see how iron itself can lead to many diseases like calcification. Calcification is a hallmark sign of hypothyroidism. Calcification in the arteries. It's a hallmark sign of heart disease. 
It's a hallmark sign of increased parathyroid hormone, not getting enough calcium in our diet and not absorbing it. And it's a hallmark sign of diabetes, which diabetes is increased fatty acid oxidation, increased lipid peroxidation. We're not getting glucose into the cell because free fatty acids block that. So think about that if you're taking iron supplementation. Now let's talk about ferritin. A lot of people do a lab and they go, oh my God, my ferritin levels are high. I have high iron levels. I, I, I gotta, I'm freaking out. I'm going to die. I got high iron levels going to my body. The problem is anytime you're in an inflamed state, anytime you're hypothyroid, the liver is actually going to release stored iron because it's actually being overloaded from bacterial overgrowth in the stomach. It's fed through the portal vein, through the stomach, spleen, pancreas, and small intestine. So it releases iron stores. Now ferritin in the body goes up because ferritin acts as a buffer because it binds to iron to protect the body. So anytime you're stressed, of course, in a sense, iron levels or iron stores are going to be released from the liver. Ferritin levels are going to go up to buffer and bind to these iron stores to protect you. So don't freak out if you have high ferritin levels. It doesn't mean you have high iron levels. It's actually the body's system of auto-regulation. So don't ignore it. Just listen to it. Now, calcium and iron displace copper. So one way to lower iron levels in the body, if you have high iron levels, is to eat a diet that's high in copper-rich foods, like dates, shellfish, and whitefish. Anytime copper levels are low, now copper is very important in the cell for cell metabolism, um, but anytime copper levels are low, iron in the tissues actually absorption increases. So we can displace this and decrease it by increasing the copper in our body from these foods, balancing the copper to iron ratio, and decreasing our tissues absorption of iron. So that's one simple way of lowering iron absorption. And that's eating, you know, uh, white fish like cod and sole, shellfish, anything with a shell, oysters, clams, mussels, lobster, uh, scallops, etc. Or eating dates, which are high in copper. This can actually displace iron stores. Of course, as I mentioned, eating a diet high in refined foods, flours, pastas, black olives, these all contain iron, cooking with cast iron pots. Um, and another study showed by the uh, uh, American Journal of Epidemiology that eating these foods or using cast iron pots um, and getting a diet high in heme iron from meats and things like this is associated with a greater risk of myocardial infarction, which is heart diseases and things like that. So think about this when you're using these things. You should really understand what you're using and what you're putting in your body. Now, some other interesting facts. We can wrap this up because you're probably sick of you know, hearing from me at this point of how bad iron is. If you eat liver one time per week, three to six ounces, you can increase your iron stores. There's enough liver in, there's enough iron in liver to replace your iron stores. If you have high iron, never drink it directly with orange juice because vitamin C can increase the iron absorption. But you just eat liver one time per week, three to six ounces, of course, with some tropical fruits or carbohydrates, squashes, and things like that. As I mentioned, make sure you completely understand what type of anemia you have. There's many types. You get intrinsic factor, B12 folate, copper, vitamin C, B6 anemia, thymine, and rub blood cells. Interesting thing about B6 is excess estrogen, which can lead to hemolytic anemia. Estrogen actually wastes B6. B6 increases prolactin. So you can kind of see the correlation here. B6 is a kind of anemia. So really understand what is going on before you jump on the bagwan no, bandwagon of taking iron because it's highly toxic and we can't excrete it. Now, according to my research, most supplements contain about 60 to 300 milligrams of iron, far more than needed and can be absorbed by the body, which can perpetuate bacterial overgrowth. At the same time, these iron supplementations and excess iron can actually interfere with zinc metabolism. And zinc is very important for the hormonal system, the immune system, and the GI because it actually, with thymine, which can be anemia, produces hydrochloric acid. So now you can affect the stomach, create a hypochlorhydria, Proteins putrefy, leading even more to bacterial overgrowth. So how do we lower iron levels if they're high? Obviously, decrease the amount of muscle meat you're taking in. Decrease the amount of liver that you're taking in. You can use aspirin. You can watch my video on um, aspirin, the other white powder. That can actually lower iron levels. You can avoid fortified foods, alcohol, and avoid vitamin C supplements. If you feel you need to increase your iron, like I mentioned, you can eat red meat with vitamin C, like orange juice. You can eat liver with orange juice. And don't drink coffee, because coffee 
prevents the reabsorption of iron. So that would be another thing you can actually do to lower iron stores in the body. Some of the most common things we do to lower iron stores, because we believe most people are high and quite toxic, is we you know, recommend liver once a week, never drinking orange juice with muscle meats um, or liver, cutting back on the amount of muscle meats you're eating, only eating them one to three times a week, using aspirin with K2 throughout the day um, to increase oxidative cell metabolism and decrease iron stores, increase the amount of copper-rich foods in their diet, and sipping on coffee, cream, and honey in between meals to prevent iron reabsorption in the small intestine. So I'm tired. I'm out of here. Hopefully you've enjoyed this YouTube click. Peace.